just like, whoa, ow, that'll pinch the crap out of you. Hi there, folks, and welcome to another episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. You're asking yourself, why? What's going on here? Well, the show must go on, and I have an unboxing. Nope. I have a bimini top that I want to put together out here that I purchased to go on the banana. The banana's getting a new headdress, new bimini top. Uh, what's on it right now is one that I had cut down from an 8 foot wide pontoon boat to fit. I'm glad I had it for last weekend. It's 7 foot long, but the one I bought is 8 foot long. And you guys might ask yourself, why do you want such a large bimini top on your boat? I like to fish in the shade. What can I say? So let's bring it on over here. And I've got this down for you. Guys, if you haven't purchased yourself a couple of moving blankets, now, I'm putting this down on here because I kind of have to lay this thing out and put it together and walk on it. And I don't want to damage my bimini top against my concrete floor. So let's, let's rip it open. Let's see what we got here. The link to it will be in the description below for this particular bimini top. If you like what you see, don't be afraid to click that link and go visit the old Amazon and take a look at what I bought. And I got this in, what color is this? It's called uh, Forest. I don't know how much assembly is gonna be required here, but I'll guarantee I'm gonna do all of it. Now this is a four pole bimini. And like all bimini's that I've put on in the past, you've got to assemble them on the ground and then ha -ha. and then you take them out to the boat and start putting them together. Well, I need my knife again. Yo, let's cut some stuff. Nice, bright, shiny new poles. These aren't marked in any way that I can see. Now this has a beam width. What I ordered has a beam width and I'll go out there tomorrow when we're hopefully some sunshine and less rain going on because I'd love to have been doing this outside in the daylight when, today, but it's raining. Lord, did I go the wrong way with this one or what? There we go. Now these are together like this. Usually, I wanna show you this here. This is kind of the spread you get when it's up. If you wanna know how that goes together, that's a pretty simple way to know how that fits. There'll be a left side and a right side and uh, hey, did this one have, what? I didn't think I ordered one. Well, we'll see here, because this looks like one that has a support pole. I thought I ordered one that just had two strings. I don't remember, that's been like, last weekend I ordered it. Yeah, it looks like, whoa, ow, that'll pinch the crap out of you. Sorry, little thumb. Look out for the alligator jaws. Okay. So here again. All right. We got all the pieces. Let's cut this one out. Let's set it free. Set it free. Ha. Now these poles have a curve to them. That creates a nice bow on top. That's nice. 
Let's get in here. Haha. I like this color and I like the fact that it's got like beading around the edge. Oh. It's got a, a cover, so when it's collapsed, it's covered. Let's just spread this out and take a look at what we got here. Kind of describe a few things. Here we go. Now, here's the cool part. I'm on the bimini top, or I'm on this, I'm on this uh, blanket, and this shows it to be front. So we'll start down on this end. Whoops. Yeah, whoop, ho. Look at that. Got a footprint right on it. So. It would appear that these have got to slide through here. Let me, let me give you a close-up of the, look at the blueprint here, what we're working with. So, as you can see here, you got an internal eye end, a crossbar snap, a jaw slide, jaw slide. But you see how this one's set up? It's gonna have a support brace in the back, and then one that comes down, and I've had, I've got another one like this, and these are nice because you can take it, unhook this, lay it down, fold the whole thing down flat. But this actually makes the top a whole lot more rigid, especially when you got an eight foot span, as this one's supposed to be. Here, how they show you how, how it goes together. Shows you how all four bars go through here, and then you snappity, snappity, snap. Same way on the other side. Looks like you can assemble it all upside down and then we'll pick our pivot point to put this on the deck. And then once it's, once we pick that, we'll put the strap point down. We'll put the rear mount place in place. So we'll drill that down. So we have the rear middle pivot and the front loose strap where it clicks into here. That's what we're going for here. So let's see how far we can get. And it looks like all four posts, all the uprights that go up and out and do all kinds of fun stuff, front and rear, are not the same. Okay. What you wanna watch for right here. See how this one is shorter? See what we got there? That means these two go together, just like that. Make sense? Let's get into the hardware. Let's see what we got for hardware. Can't believe I put a couple of footprints on it already, but man, that's why I can't have nice things. So what we got here is three bags of stuff. Now what's nice is they provide you, you know, I've got two other screwdrivers like this and I wondered where they came from. I couldn't remember, but they come with every bimini top pretty much. Uh, to put it together and this is plastic hardware but it's actually quite durable so we got plastic hardware plastic hardware we got hardware hardware here i'm just going to lay it all out on my countertop here and what you'll notice right off the bat is you've got some phillips screws does these fit this? Yup. Looks like we got several of them. What is that for? Whoa. Got one of these guys. Looks like it goes in a tube and goes clip. Is that a replacement piece or a spare piece or what is that? Yup. Mm-hmm. Front. You bet. Yup. Mmm. 
looks pretty easy. So the nice thing with all this hardware is it does have socket, a hex in here. It helps hold things. And then you got your nice little Phillips that they provide you. I think that's handy. Uh, let's, uh, let's get started here. Let's get some screws and some nuts. Right now it's just gonna be, looks like quarter 20. They could be metric, but they're about that size, about a quarter inch in diameter. And let's just go ahead and put the pivot together. So these two things face each other. And then this shorter one fits right here. And we'll go ahead and set this nut in the other side here. Why didn't I bring this screwdriver with me? Well, that was silly. Another footprint. Now, they do provide you a screwdriver, so no tools required at this point other than when you go to drill. So I'm bringing that together snug, but not too snug yet. So now you've got this set up. Look at that. That's what you got so far, right? And then you want this shorter one is going to face the front. Because when it's on the boat like this, it starts doing a spread out thing. Whoops, too much. This short side will be toward the front. And this long side will be toward the back. Does that make sense? I know I'm probably giving you guys way too much Bimini information. So that assembly is complete that way. Cool part is, well, like I said, the short side to the front. So now I can go ahead and snap this into here. There we go. And the nice thing is these have, they're curved and they can only go together one way, it looks like. That's helpful for a guy like myself. Then the next one, the middle one, let's just say not middle, but front middle. Oh. Let me snap this guy in. What did I just do? <laughs> I did it wrong. Wrong one. Glad they snapped together. Does make it nice. What am I doing here? Well, that was brilliant. I hooked the not front one. Wow. Am I having a moment or what? Front to front, Michael. Golly. There we go. Just so you guys, I'm leaving this in here. Just so you guys know I'm human. There we go. There we go. Nice thing is once you get it into the fabric like that, it starts to hold itself together, which is more than I can say for myself. Why not these? What am I doing? These, not yet, not yet. Where's my other ones? Hello, where are you? Where are you hiding? There you are. All right. Kind of like putting up a tent.
All right, now we got Think, start to see what we got coming together here. That really eight foot long? That looks short. One third, one, yeah, maybe. We're gonna measure it. I bought an eight foot bimini. It better be freaking eight feet long. All right. To bimini or not to bimini? That's the question. Well, I say bimini. Because on my boats, I have an area up front where I can cast and stand and be free. But when that sun gets a little too hot for me, I can retreat, have a drink, in the bim underneath the bimini. I put that one in first because I gotta slide this over just a touch. To expose a little bit of pole out the end here. Like that. Oh, coming together, coming together. So far, initial thoughts on this is not half bad. One thing I do like about having a Bimmy on my boat too, is you get caught in a little bit of a drizzle or a rain It uh, offers up a little bit of protection. I'll be on my boat looking up at this thing going, why did you put so many footprints? Well, there it is. Pretty much assembled. So when it's up there, it's gonna stretch out like that. Well, that's an eight foot bimini. That's supposed to be 96 inches. That's only like seven and a half feet. That'll work. It's gonna look nice. The one I got on there is seven feet, so that would cut down version. All that's left now is a couple more of these little fan dancy screws. These go right on here in the back side, right here. The nice thing is this does come with the nylock nuts, which will help under vibration in other situations, will not let it vibrate out. Because the last thing you want to do is lose your screws and the thing collapse on you on the boat. So now this one will be the one when it's flipped over, will be supported here. So we've got that one installed. 
it's going together so fast. I hope you guys didn't blink. Or if you got up to get a beer or a drink of some sorts, you might have missed the most of this assembly already. It's just going so fast. There we go. At least we have just enough room in the shop to get this done indoors. Now, we got four of these guys. Two will go in the middle and two will go in the back. And this will be where you're, they don't give you crazy large screws but that tells you it doesn't take much to hold these in place. The proper size pre-drilled holes and installing these screws, you're good. Then it comes with these little hooky doos here that you hook the front straps into. Now, I'm not quite sure, or am I sure, or am I positive? Anybody else just like to rip Ziploc bags open even though they have a Ziploc on them? I don't know, I just do it. Just seems like an aggressive way to get in, get in at your stuff. I wanna look at one of these straps. Just curious how they how they how they want to do that. Huh. What would appear on the front side you just put this through the screw hole and this goes down and clips down to your little uh, doohickey you're gonna bolt onto your boat. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the remaining. Why didn't they get, oh, I see why they did that. Okay, gotcha, I'm with you. I'm on par. So they give you a, a nut and a screw so you can put this one in. And you guys might be asking, why am I going ahead and installing this? Is because I wanna get the position on the boat figured out and then I'll mark the holes and then I'll drill my pilot hole. And then I'll put my screw in. I'm using my GoPro for this particular video because you know I'm up close and I need a wide angle and my regular camera won't do that. So this GoPro is supposed to be doing 4K for me. 4K, I say okay. Now on this end, is a little different beast. Because this one you can take in and out as you want, as far as when you're collapsing it. So it gives you these guys. And you can take, you can use these, it looks like to me. Yep, mm-hmm, nope. I see what they did here. I see what they did here. Now you got a picture of this is currently upside down. So this will be mounted to the boat. This will be mounted to the boat. And you got this like fast and furious spoiler behind you. And you can put this here cover over it. So you get some more down pressure. You know, so you get more traction on the water. Yep, traction. That's what it's all about. All right. Well, that's ready. Yep. And it looks like 
you can use one of these knobby poos up here because they don't give you enough bolts so here you just put the old gonna have to do a little scrunchy action maybe fold it yeah we'll do that we'll fold it inward yep just is this gonna tighten down on the thread just be right on the thread no protection thread's gonna cut right through it probably not it's pretty pretty tough stuff this nylon yep there's the front one that'll go hooking on to near the front of your boat yes it will let's uh put the last one on and i suppose if you didn't want to have a a hard pole at the back um they send you four of these so you could use and four straps so you could just have four straps and not the hard pole here but you know i kind of like the hard pole set up because you can have the bimini kind of up in its spoiler position and then storm comes up you just grab those two straps we're installing right now and you just run to the front of the boat boop, 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 boop. your four bow bimini is right there now i have received uh once upon a time a bimini top from empire covers and i'll tell you what they are a little more money but they are really really nice they're i can't say that the material it's probably a little heavier duty for sure and uh it has a the last one i got actually has a this little storage protection pocket thingy is built in so when you collapse it you just wrap it around and go which is quite convenient then you don't have a stray piece of material you got to keep track of all right and just like that I'm gonna look at the timer on the camera because this, this is all one shot pretty much. What does it say? 31 minutes. And this is ready to tidy up and put on the boat. I'm gonna see what this beam width relaxed mode here comes out at because my boat, the current pivots that are on it measure about 61. Ooh, and this is 70. So mine is going to be, and this is supposed to be like a 60 to 70 or something like that. So, but these things have a lot of, as you can see, I can pull that in a lot. Let's just see how strong my old tapey measure is here. Yeah, so I can pull that into 61, no problem. But uh, we're going to lay it on the boat, mark it out. Because there's a couple things I want you to watch for when you're putting this on your boat. Because there's two ways to store it. You can stow it forward or you can stow it backward. Backward on the boat, uh, the wind won't catch it when you're trailering it. Or doing 172 miles an hour on a boat on the water. You're going throw it forward and you're trailering it. You better have something to hold it down so the wind don't catch it and snatch it backwards. For this particular one... The reason I don't want it to go backwards, I like throwing it forward, is because it rests on top of my engine, my outboard. And I don't want it to rest there. But, if you throw it forward, it's kind of cool because my trolling motor, when it comes up and comes back, just lays right on top of it there and, and protects it. So it's kind of cool. Well, now that I got it all tracked up on the inside, we're gonna go ahead and collapse it here. Cause all we gotta do is pick it up. Come on, let go. My Merc Cruiser Outdrive wants to be, wants to get in the action here. Oh, there we go. Prevented that from going as smooth as I'd like it to. All right. Now this is hitting me in the head right here, right? My boat's about a foot and a half deeper. 
that's why I got the height I got. I think this is a 54 inch. I don't remember for sure, but uh, Oh, this is going to be magnificent. I'm just tucking it in like it would have happened if it was uprighted on the boat. There we go. Everything's hanging inside. Footprints and all. Now what I do is I take these straps and I do one of these numbers. Whoops. And I'll show you why. See how it just kind of tidies that up a little bit? Kind of, what's going on here? Where are your manners? What did I do wrong? If you wrap them around the opposite direction and you do like this, boom. This kind of helps you hold it together. Now, I'm doing this all by myself here, folks. Not even on a boat. No assistance. Now the cover. You guys might be asking, why are you putting the cover on? Because I can. Whoa, slow down. Oh, it's got a little Velcro thingy here. Keeps the zipper from coming unzippity doo dot. That's kind of nice. Good idea. Yep. Yo. Well, not inside out. Not what's going on. Get. Go to your home. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Easy. Easy. Now we're coming up under here. I'm gonna get my zipper started. I'm doing this because it's gonna help me carry it outside without it all. It's gonna hold it together for me. Oh yeah. And as you're zipping it up, you just kind of like tuck it in here. Oh yeah, look at that. Fantastic. Seems like a pretty nice zipper on this thing. There we, whoop, stay, stay, sit. There you go, that's together. Little Velcro. Boom. Now that, that's, that's pretty spiffy looking. Now, you see why I wrapped those up in there and helped hold it together? Part two is you don't want these things sneaking out and flapping on your boat and beating up your gel coat or your aluminum or your paint. There we go. Whoa, easy, easy. Just like that. They make a thing that snaps these together here too. Woo woo. So typically this is laying underneath it. Yep. Is this gonna lay back? Whoa, easy, easy. Now when this is on your boat. It's gonna look something like that. And like I said, you can undo these right here and lay them down and lay the whole thing flat. And then anyway, this thing's at the ready. And it looks cool. It looks really cool. All right. Let's uh, come, we'll, talk, we'll, we'll get back here on this tomorrow. And uh, 
Let's put it on the boat, man. This is cool. Where do I put this? How do you store it like this? Okay. Oh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There we go. Can't block my Diet Coke. Well, I'm pretty pleased with that. What do you guys think so far? All righty, we're back out here. It's the next morning. The rain has subsided. It is a most gorgeous, beautiful morning out. We're gonna go ahead and remove the cover off the boat. Now you can see my existing bimini right here is sits just ahead of this seat. I'm gonna go ahead and lower the trolling motor just to get it out of my way. There we go. I wanna get you in here so you can see the existing mount that's there. It's low, it's not very tall, it's tall enough but the new ones are a little bit taller, which allows some of this pole action here to lay down flatter when they're stacking up on top of each other. Now this is a four pole Bimini, just like the one I bought, only it doesn't have the solid rear bar. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this one. I might be able to use these existing screw holes so I don't have to put any more holes in my boat, which that would be kind of nice. I like the position of this one front to rear. Uh, it wasn't too bad at all. It didn't interfere with my casting deck up front. And it had all kinds of acreage of coverage back here, which was fantastic. I'm gonna need my flat blade screwdriver to remove this one. It's really dewy out this morning. Fog's in the air. Nice cool morning. Now just for fun, I'm gonna stand my old one up next to the new one just for as a, it's kind of a quick comparison. As you can see, this one ends up being just a touch taller. And it is uh, pretty much the same width. So the touch taller is actually gonna be kind of nice because it'll be a little further ahead of that seat. No problem with it interfering so I think I'm gonna place this one exactly where the other one was at why not all right and this is still a good bimini there's nothing wrong with it you can tell it's a heavier canvas so I'm kind of curious how the how it's gonna go this is this is handier if you have somebody to help you but I currently don't right now The whole positions look exactly the same. So let's see if the screws will interchange. I'm pretty sure they will. It's not that these brackets are any taller, but they are more squared off than the old ones. So they'll fit in there a little better. And these seem to hold just fine. So we'll just go with it. Now, one thing I noticed with this one laying down forward and the other one did too, it puts a little extra stress on this right here because it needs to be up just a touch. As you can see that how that far off that is. I'm gonna get something under here, up something under here to support it. Ooh, those two screws just came off. I caught them. Yep. Quick like a lemur, this one is. Looks like the existing screws will work just dandy. Now what I like to do, since I'm using the existing screw holes, I like to put a little silicone. Got some marine grade silicone here. Just a little dab of that in the holes. And you don't have to do this, but there's wood and stuff underneath here. Might as well seal it up and protect it.
Now I'm only putting the one screw in. I'll put the second one in in just a minute. We'll go ahead and take these two out now that we know we don't need them. Now comes the important part. We're gonna actually put some more holes. Actually, all this has been the important part. But we're gonna put some more holes in the boat. And that doesn't excite me at all, but I need some of the mount the rear mounts and the front clips. All right, I think I'm ready to flip this thing upward. Now I've still only got one screw in each one of these. So I gotta be careful not to torque on it too much. Okay, we got that back to there. I wish I'd unclipped that thing up there. I really wish I would have. Now I kind of want to temporarily spread this out. If I can, just kind of take a look and see how it's going to fall. Whoa. Now we'll kind of balance here a little bit. That's what I'm going to do. I'll reposition these again. Now this is plenty tall for me to walk around in and that was the goal. Well, it looks like one hole lined up and the other one didn't. That's okay. We'll go ahead and put my pilot drill in here. Now that's secured. Let's do the other side. All right, that's more secure now. Okay, we did a quick test flop here. I wanna do that one more time now that I've got those secured down like I want. And basically at this point, it's how do you want the boat to look? You know, do you want the bimini parallel to the top or parallel to the boat, which that looks pretty good right there. I kinda of like that a lot. That looks pretty spiffy. Then what I'll do is I'll mark out back here. So I got a light pole that goes right here. And I'm just gonna kind of put this, so when I eyeball down the poles here, that all three of these look pretty parallel and that's where I wanna mark it. Got my little Sharpie here. I'll put my two little dots. I'm gonna bring you around here real quick and show you what I'm doing for drilling. All right, what I'm using, the screws that came with it work just fine, no problem there. The drill bit you wanna use, I don't know if I can get this in the shot, is smaller. I don't know if you can see that. The threads stick out past the drill quite a bit. Basically the inside body you see there, this drill bit's just a touch smaller than that. And as you see, I marked it out here. I got to be in the center of this guy. Put a hole there. That I hit a lot of wood there. That's pretty cool. Next step is very important. And I don't want you guys to miss this. That's why I brought you in close. You take a 
this is kind of overkill, but you take a chamfer tool and just chamfer it out. Just enough to remove your gel coat around that hole. And what that'll do is that'll keep the uh, gel coat from chipping on you. So the next person that plays around here will go, wow, this guy really knew what he was doing. He put some, he put some chamfers on there. And here I'm gonna give it another shot. And this is just, you don't have to put that silicone there. That's just me being me. Now I'm gonna back this one out so I can get a straight shot on that screw to get it going in straight. There we go. That's a clean install. Now in order to keep everything uniform, I'm gonna measure from the back of the boat to the back of this, and from the side of here to the side of that, and lay out the other one so I know where it needs to be and put my marks on the boat. And we'll go from there. So it was 12 inches from the back of the boat to the center of that first screw there, that's toward the back, and two and an eighth inches in. That's two and an eighth, 12, first hole's got to be right there. The other thing that silicone helps do is give a little lubrication on the screw so it helps go in a little bit easier so you don't put too much stress on your screw and break it. See, that's already fairly sturdy. That's actually pretty nice. That's why I do like the rear pole versus just the strap. It just adds a little more, I don't know, half again as much rigidity to it. Let's move to the front pieces. Now the front pieces, you see kind of the angle that the back's going at. I kind of want to do the same thing with the front. And at this point, you're wanting to pull some tension on it. Now, as you can see here, this cover is not centered. So I'm going to go ahead and center the cover up. That's just from the garage floor assembly process, right? I'll just take and pull this over a little bit. There we go. All right. So it looks like I want it just ahead of this boat cleat. It'd be a good spot for it to clip in. The nice thing about these, they can go all kinds of places. So you just gotta get this, figure out approximately where you want the first one and then match the second one up to it. Yeah, I like that. That uh, makes a real sturdy top out of things. So we're gonna put it approximately right here. And this is where those little, little, uh, what do you call them? Little tiny clips come in. We're talking these things, that's where these come in. We're gonna put these two in now, up here. Now I have seen people put them on the inside of the boat, which ain't a bad idea. There's actually one right here. Hey, there's already two here on the inside of the boat. Maybe, instead of drilling more holes, Somebody had a bimini on here at one time. Let's just see if this will reach. If you got an older boat, chances are people have done stuff, put holes in it. Anytime you can take advantage of the existing holes, go for it. I can pull that down. And you're trying to put it together so you have the same amount of tension on both of them and it holds everything kind of steady. Man, we got some weird bird noises going on. Sounds like a hawk or... I don't know if you guys can hear that. There we go. 
Now my experience has been you can run 30, 40 miles an hour with these Bemini's up. Uh, they're sturdy enough. Now if you get on a, a lake that's really rough, I, I was on a really rough lake last weekend, and by golly, what is that? You guys hear that? That could be a Sasquatch. Sasquatches approve of bimini tops. All right, very good. That's installed, expertly installed. Yes siree. Now let's collapse it down once. I'm gonna show you that. We're gonna go ahead and take the back poles out and show you why I did it, put it where I put it. Because if you lay this thing down backwards, it lands right on top of the outboard. I don't like that. That's not good at all. Now when I'm collapsing this down, a lot of times you can, when I'm on the boat, I'll take and collapse it back this way, put the cover on it, and then uh, take these loose, and then flop it the other way. But in the interest of, I don't know what this is, We're gonna just take and do this right now. We're gonna bring this up, try to get this to collapse like it would. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of stress here. Watch what I'm doing there. There's a lot of stress there on that because, just because. I'm not a big fan of that. The only way to relieve that stress is if I make a little stand or something here to kind of hold this up right here. But if I hold that up right there, my trolling motor won't collapse. Just for fun, let's flip it back the other way. Oh, helps if you unhook it first. See, this will actually land right on top of the outboard. Which for transporting and whatnot, it's not awful. It's supported, not putting any unnecessary strain here. I can put a little Velcro strip around here to hold these poles from flopping around. Yeah. I think I will get me some Velcro. Some of the Velcro ties, just boop, tie that up. It's on my drill. Is that causing me any headaches? Possibly. Oh, wasn't even touching. So yeah, theoretically I could, in transport mode, have it just like that. I'm not unhappy with that. Then when I get to the lake, I just do what I'm gonna always do from this point forward, is stand it up. Before I put it in the water, that's what I'm going to do for sure. Then it's not on the motor anymore. It's not putting any extra stress on the outboard by just resting there. It's, I mean, it's, it's made out of metal and it's uh, sturdy and you know all those other strengthy words. Yeah. And I've seen people pull them to the lake just like this with this up in the air. I'm not a big fan of that. Cause bumps and wind and can put a lot of stress on all this stuff. Wow, there's a lot of dew out here this morning. But yeah, so when I get to the lake, this could just be still up and covered up up there with my the protective cover. Yeah, I wouldn't want to tow it like that. But the nice thing is all you gotta do is grab this guy. Boom. Clip. There we go. And then, I'm not walking on sunshine. Whoa, whoa, I'm not walking in sunshine. That's right, I'm in the shade, fishing. I control, move my chair around in the boat where I want to sit in the shade, throw my feet up, and wait for the fish bite. Up here, I'm sitting in this area here. I can easily, I'm ahead of all this, so I can I can work out of the front of the boat, no problem. This isn't in the way. I want to dive in out of the shade, I can. The nice thing is my bait, my cooler, and all my battery 
and just all the things you want to protect a little bit from the uv and the heat can kind of hang out in the shady spots of the boat while you're out there catching the big ones yep i like it she's a beauty clark and you know some people might ask why'd you pick the forest green well i don't know go packers i don't watch much football but uh, the yellow and green kind of got kind of has a packer vibe don't it but that's that's fine this is this has turned out really well i'm, I'm very satisfied the link for everything in this video will be below in the description uh not the drill bits maybe a set of drill bits i'll put a link to a set of drill bits i bought that seem to have been working pretty good i've been using them for a while now and for metal wood and fiberglass but uh yeah this is this is this is coming right along this boat is what i would call officially done other than i want to put some rod holders in here and once i get the rod holders in here maybe a a drink holder or two uh i don't like i don't want to put anything on the inside that i can run up against but it's looking good what the heck is oh oh i hope that's mud pretty sure it is yep i'm convinced myself it's just mud all right folks don't forget to like and subscribe hope you found this informative and helpful if these bimini tops don't be afraid to put one on your boat uh they're easy they're very simple to put together um highly recommended i've got one on every boat that i take on the water i can't say every boat i won't own but every boat i take on the water plus one i don't take on the water yet which is old big blue over there that i'm working on it has a big giant bimini because it has a beam width oh yeah let's talk about a little bit of that when you guys are looking up a bimini the height that you're looking for that it has is let me get my tape measure here i think this is important when you're buying one that you get something close to what you fit now this is a 14 foot boat this has a beam width and a beam width is you know outside to outside here is 66 inches so this was 61 to 66 or something like that is what this was designed for 67 I had it earlier in the video uh and this is 66 inch outside to outside so you know make sure you get one that fits when you're buying it fits within the range that's your beam width there's a lot of little diagrams out there that'll help you decide what this is now this was a 54 inch height and that's right when it's installed by golly that's right there 54 inches is the, is the height from right here not the floor right here up so if i wanted to see you know i'm six foot one and this is like six foot four right here to the top i can walk around underneath here i could probably even install a, ce a ceiling hugger ceiling fan in here and put some air on it <laughs> no but then the length you go from here to here to be the length of this and this one here is supposed to be eight foot which is 96 inches which is where my thumb is and by golly it's right there it's it's right there i mean this is going from the center here to the back would be eight foot long so she's right on so she's a foot longer than my other one um which i i wanted that i wanted more coverage and they actually i almost bought one that has a thing that zips on the side and actually covers the side down to about here now i've been in some rainstorms where that would have been handy just a little bit of protection but the other thing i've also thrown in my boat if i knew it might rain is my big golfing umbrella because it's nice to sit there in your chair with your golfing umbrella and put that against the wind to keep you a little you're going to get soaked guys but it keeps the direct blast off of you so now this is now these poles here there's a 7 8 pole one that you can buy or one inch i highly recommend i'm not sure why anybody would buy the 7 8 um the one inch seems to be more standard more common out there and let's just face it one inch is going to be more sturdier more sturdier than 7 8 so we're talking one eighth of an inch but it gets a little more spindly looking with a 7 8 diameter 
What else can I share with you? This angle back here, not crazy critical. I could have moved this up a little bit and had it more vertical, but as everybody knows, this triangle is more sturdy than something like this. So that's why I angled it back. And also, you know, I'm dodging a few other components that I might have here, like my, my pole holder, my light holder, stuff like that. Now, what I do notice I have here, and this is kind of interesting, and you guys have probably already seen this video. Yep. I've got these two other holes here that are kind of scummy looking around the top. And I got these boat cleats that I put on here in a video you guys probably will have seen by the time this video comes out. Got these collapsible boat cleats. Now what I did notice was you can you can can you have too many boat cleats? Possibly. But when they're flush mount like this or flat, the more the merrier. I did find out that I have, you know, I could hang my bumper off of one real comfortably and with the bumper rope there and then tying off if you use the same rope that you're tying off your i mean sometimes you need a little more rope so you either put a longer rope on your bumper fender so you can actually hang it in here loop it a few times and then go to the dock and tie off nice and tight which is probably the better way to do it or you can add more cleats double up on your cleats one's your bumper cleat one's a tie off cleat what do you guys think about that i've got these two holes that i had here now i could put those pieces back on but something tells me another stainless cleat right here right next to this one wouldn't be awful <gasps> no we're going to do better than that this is a good spot for a rod holder yeah if I put a rod holder here, that's what we're going to do. I put a rod holder here. I could also, that rod holder can double as a, a bimini top support. Yeah, stay tuned. Why has this got strings coming off of it? Who sewed that? My goodness, that's a terrible sewing job. I wonder if they use uh, upholstery thread or not. That's what I do. All right. We've rambled on enough. I think you guys get the point here. I think you have all the information you need when you're installing a bimini uh, as to, I'm gonna leave this up all day. Let's get the sun fade started. But yeah, well, this is, uh, I like it. That's the coolest thing since sliced bread. This is Michael saying, if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. We'll see you in the next video. I gotta put my tools away. And uh, on to the next project. Hey guys, we got a little bit of low light conditions going on out here, but I'm going to try to get this little bit of video in here anyway. You know, I pulled those two little pivot, you know, these things out of here and it left some holes behind. And I got to thinking, what could I put in there? What can I do to make those holes useful? And I thought, rod holder right here now the nice thing about these rod holders is they don't take up a lot of space and they do this well come on and you can take it completely out and all that's left sitting here is this guy oh this even says it's got an arrow that says inboard and i could center this up right here and just kind of play hide and seek with those nasty little holes I like that. Yep. Oh, I just thought of something else I could do with it. Sweet. Yep. If I line it up with this, the rod holder can also be a bimini top support. Maybe. So we're going to put it right there. Let's reach under here and just see what all we're going to be. Yep, that'll work pretty good. We're gonna put them right there. What do you think of that? Let's get you down here where you can see what's going on. Now these are made by Scotty. They got shields outfitters on them. 
but they're made by Scotty. It says it right there, right there. And they got Scotty ones at Shields that say Scotty. So if people that don't want to support or recognize Shields, same price. Scotty or Shields, pick your poison. Now I picked me up some screws. These didn't come with screws. So we're gonna get right down to here and mark us some centers here on four holes. Yep, precision marked holes. And I'll fill in these two holes with some silicone. Fair enough. And what I bought is some stainless sheet metal screws. You guys are gonna go sheet metal screws. Yep, sheet metal screws. Um, these will work, especially the way I'm gonna use them. So I'm gonna do like I did before. These should fit down in here. Look at that. Precision. Probably could have gone a little bit shorter. Yep. What am I gonna hit underneath there if I go in that long, hey? Get my hand up in there. We should be all right. Same as before, I'm gonna select a, a drill that's a little bit smaller than the body. So I get maximum bitage. Minimal disruption of my fiberglass material. Yep, there we go. That drill right there is going to do it. You guys are just going to see how fast this actually happens. So I got my little ink marks right there in the center. Smells very fiberglassy. Yep. Mm hmm. Sure enough, does. Voila. Whammo. And I'm gonna chamfer it just like I did the what you saw me do earlier in this video. That's why I don't chip out my gel coat. That's absolutely perfect. Let's take a look at this guy. That says inboard that way. All right. Yep. Holes line up. Now we'll get the old silicone squirter 2000 here. Yeah. Wham bam. Ba bam. I'll fill these holes in too, because they're going to be underneath now. We'll see them. Yeah, that's going to be perfect. Now, the nice thing is if these actually do rip out or strip out or do something funky, I can go ahead and go to the same type of screw, just a machine screw, and uh, hold it right in place. Let's just, let's just send these home. So the reason they got this inboard is this spline here, and there's spline here. Because these are designed to go in. Whoops, I just dropped something important. Yep, there it is. Got it. It can go in the side here or on the top. So either or. Yep, send her right home. No problem here. Another perfect drill selection.
Well, if that was the pull out, that means I was hooked into way more fish than I was planning on catching, like a, I don't know, big old 400 pound tuna. All right. Looks like this design is gonna go on either side. Yeah, that's gonna be cool. Locked and loaded. Let's see, there's a place where it goes in, lines up with the key, boom, like that. Once you go down just so far, then you can rotate it wherever you want it. Right there. So a lot of times when I'm trolling, I'll throw my poles out to the side. But then once you go, you just lock it down in place like that. I've had a couple pole holders like this on my other boat and I really enjoy them. And if you really want to lock your rod in, you can bring that around and really lock things in. But I find that this traps it, holds it. That's solid. Then you just want to go pop. There you go, it's in line with the boat. It can actually help hold your cover up or something. Cool, I like it. Let's go put one on the other side. Absolutely. Now I got it turned in right now, but it's really easy to turn out. Nice thing is you can have it up at an angle so your rod's up high. A lot of times what I'll do too when I'm trolling, is I'll bring this down to horizontal. Just like that. That way I can send the rods way out the side. If I got another person with me, I can fish with four poles and I can send two out the back and two out the side. You have four, four uh, chances to catch a fish. Pretty sweet. Now this is pretty much in real time, folks. I'm just doing this so you can see what it actually takes to get the job done. Not much, not much at all. It helps that I've done a couple of them, no doubt. I got four of this style on my other fishing boat and I really like them. That's why I bought more. All done, all set. Let's see, 16 minutes and 30 seconds total. So this might be edited down a little bit shorter, edited down a little bit shorter, but that total install was 16 minutes and 30 seconds. And I even had to drag all my tools out here. <laughs> 